Um, our next speaker is Ed Gentry of uh, MID. He, he is the product owner of Smart Facts. Um, and we can see you, Ed, Ed, and you can start sharing your screen and take it away if you want to. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, our new uh, commercial offering, Gen OSLC, the development framework, which really accelerates um, uh, building OSLC based integrations. SmartFacts has been doing OSLC based traceability for many years now, kind of started out of the modeling world and kind of started building them the commercial products. And we started talking to some of our customers and said, I've got these in house products. And I'd love to get them connected via OSLC, but it's hard. It's oh, really ben, hard. So, sorry, could yes. you go into full screen mode? Am I not in full screen? Oh, yes, of course. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> um, and so, uh, We've uh, after we built, say, our our, our code beamer um, uh, OSLC integration, our customers would ask, "Well, this is great. We can see how it connect. We can use OSLC to connect to other things, but we have some in-house products that we would like to uh, connect via OSLC. We buy the OSLC vision. We love this uh, synchronous um, integration without synchronization, um, but you know, how can we bring that home for our in-house products as well? And could we not just use the technology you just used to build your code beamer integration? The answer is yes, you can. So we've kind of taken our technology that we've been using for building our integration to JAMA and code beamer and other things and made it, made it available. So we know some challenges. Um, we was even mentioned yesterday that um, as the spec is extensive and often terse that there's real questions about how big a role do you, does RDF need to play in your, in your application? Um, do I really need Jenna? Um, and there's this kind of, if I'm gonna to talk to IBM ELM, I have to use OAuth 10A. Still, can we please fix that? Um, which is really difficult. And so how do I get, you know, when I, you know, if I'm, I have an in-house in OSLC product, how can I get very quickly take that and be able to make it play in the rest of my OSLC landscape? And that's our OSL, Gen OSLC framework solution. And the idea is that um, if I have an existing ALM tool, perhaps that's a in-house tool, perhaps it's a commercial tool, and I want to build an OSLC interface for that existing tool, that's where Gen OSLC comes in. And we have, there's two parts to it. One of them is, is the programming framework itself, which is built from scratch. We built it from scratch on top of Spring Boot. So it uses the very latest Spring Boot and there's lots of advantages to do that. Um, it provides all this, all your service size OSLC interfaces delivered as a Maven repository. So it's very easier for developers to use. And it's very easy to integrate to. So you have one single job interface, just one um, that you implement and you provide, um, and you provide a, a rich hover preview. So, you know, for your resources, whatever they are. Um, and optionally uh, you provide a, um, an artifact picker or a creation dialogue that's optional. So that's the server side that gives you all of the server side functionality. I'll kind of talk about what that looks like in a minute. Um, but that's not the whole story, the, because what I also need besides the back end is the, is the ability to very quickly create links, the query links, and display links. And that's where we have the Gen OSLC plugin. Now, this is a, a client side, so it's a browser based little applet, a uh, little lives in an iframe um, that can be easily integrated into your application. So the idea is I've got this kind of green existing ALM tool that using Gen OSLC by just implementing a um, a delegated UI and integrating and uh, implementing this tool adapter interface, and then suddenly getting a full scale, full featured Gen um, OSLC um, interface uh, in, in integration. Um, we um, we um, uh, estimate that in the time it takes to do the OSLC fest, you could have a working example. If you have a um, if you have um, an existing tool that you're using in house and you want an OSLC interface for it and the time it takes to have to do this OSLC fest, you could have something. It's that straightforward to use. So basically let's talk, go over the features and functionality. So authentication is always an issue as has been mentioned several times. So we have built-in support for OAuth 10A. 
uh, provider and consumer, including all of IBM ELM's idiosyncrasies. And there are several. So the I, uh, outbound friend flow, the technical functional user nonsense, uh, all of this is built in. Um, and then of course, because this is Spring Boot, it's super easy to build, to, if you want OIDC, you want OIDC, you want JWT, whatever you want. This is Spring Boot. It's, um, o, um, OIDC is really and truly is a dozen lines of code in Spring Boot. I mean, it's nothing to, it's really easy. So authentication is just not no longer an issue. Um, General SOC has a configurable system meta model, um, including a profile for IBM ELM. So it supports all the standard OSOC domains and links. Um, and the ability to add and custom, add custom domains and links, and you don't even have to use the profile that's there. But you know, you generally you probably want to, but you can you can create your own um, system meta model or use the one the standard OSLC meta model. Um, and then a particular integration says, okay, this is the meta model they understand. This is the world that I understand. Of these, this is the domain that I'm going to implement. Oh, maybe it's test management, and these are the um, resource types that I'll be exposing in my integration. So if I have this integration, remember the green bit. Um, okay, I select which, which, which domains out of the system model that I'm going to be implementing, and then which of the of the uh, resource types in this domain that are going to I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be exposing, and then GenOSOC just exposes all this for you. Um, so it provides all your standard REST interfaces, so the root services and SCR and application about, of course, service provider catalog, so, and also project areas for LQE. Thank you for that. Um, components, com local configurations, resources, of course, resource shapes, including customizable predicates. So now we know that, um, you know, some customers are really interested in the vocabularies and the ontologies, and some customers don't care, right? So if the customers don't care, you know, it, you, everything just works, but if you really, really care about your RDF, um, ontologies, you can you can customize your uh, predicates. And we support, again, out of the box, TRS feeds, and also link validity. So I, I'd be happy to explain how that works. And it's not with a timestamp. Um, it's the way that IBM does it, including also um, OSLC selection dialogues, including server providers and local configurations. Um, so and then there's also um, artifact which hovers and, um, and uh, but you, uh, and uh, sorry, artifact selection dialogues in which hovers. So that's the kind of the overall overall uh, functionality. Let me dig in a little bit to the details. So in terms of use cases, um, General SOC supports, of course, service provider associations. That means you can connect your service providers um, that uh, you've defined in General SOC. So you'll have said, okay, these are the service providers that we're defining. You'll of course have had to model, you know, what the General SOC concepts map to in your world. So for example, often service providers are mapped to projects, often components um, are mapped to also projects. So it's usually, it's often one-to-one, -one, but sometimes it's one-to-many. Um, General SOC has full support for global configurations. So when you have a service provider um, you, uh, and components, then components have local configurations and you can take these local configurations and contribute them to a GC. So you can contribute your, 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 uh, local your local configurations in general SOC to a global configuration. Um, and you can take that local config global configuration and you can baseline it and you can branch it if you support that in your tool. Um, and of course, all the links that you see in the, um, in the, uh, uh, the, the plugin are also of course filtered by the selected global configuration. So you've selected a particular global configuration and you've, um, uh, you'll, you'll see the, the links filtered. Um, uh, link creation from both sides. So that means if I'm in you know, one tool, I can create a link on the other side. Um, I, um, if, if you're in your native tool that you're using, that you're using GenOSOC um, is supporting, then you can create a link from that side. And there, these, this link creation is governed by the customizable system meta model. Um, and of course, with respect to the selected global configuration. So that means that you know we'll we'll create the link in the right place. We'll either create it on the on the local side if it's stored locally, or if it's where we'll create it with a get and a put with a get and a put on the other side if it's if it's stored on the other side. So again, that's all configured in the system meta model, which again is customizable. Uh, UI preview, of course. Um, the more interesting use cases are TRS feed. 
So we support a full TRS feed. So you, again, you, you, you implement the tool adapter interface and you get from that a full TRS feed, including resources and resource shapes. I've already mentioned that resource shapes include the ability to customize all of your predicates, uh, version artifacts and local configuration selection, of course. And then enabling backlink query via um, uh, backlink query enable via a link query facility such as IBM's LDX or SmartFax, of course, has its very own uh, link, uh, link query facility. And, and it's also enabled uh, lifecycle reporting uh, via SmartFax or the Jazz Reporting Service. So you can create just implementing general SOC, implement the iTool adapter interface, and then suddenly you can do full-on lifecycle reports end-to-end -end using Jazz Reporting Service or SmartFax. Um, backlink query. So the ability to um, query a link on the other side um, it's just on, it's done automatically and is always viewed, always visible in the plugin. So they're always sitting in the plugin. Nothing you have to do. They're sitting right there. And depending upon how you've defined your meta model, we'll either get them via the consolidated link index, so that means smart facts or LDX, or we'll get them via L, um, OSLC query. So you'll have defined your meta model. So obviously the jazz the the jazz meta model says that if I'm if I've got requirements and I'm looking for if I'm requirements domain, I'm looking for architecture elements, I've got to use OSLC to query to find that, unfortunately, but right. Um, and then finally, um, most recently, we support link validity. That means that we can set links as valid, invalid, and suspect, um, um, and we can query link validity. And this is all done with, a, with uh, the hash. The idea is that you're hashing the content. And this allows us to have multiple profiles. So right now we just support the standard profile, which is the IBM ELM one, which is, means everything. But um, we'll, we'll soon be able to support multiple profiles when you're using uh, that on SmartFax. So that would mean, so what, we could, what that means is, is that given certain profiles, you might say that changes to, um, on one side, all, any change on, on one side of the link causes the link to become suspect, and that's the standard profile, that's the default profile. Or you might say that only certain changes on one side of the link or on either side of the link cause the link to be suspect. Um, and uh, again, that's all about how we calculate the hash, um, which, is, uh, which is how we know whether or not the link is valid or invalid. And that's, I'll, show, I'll show you a quick demo of that. Now that's the, and then on the plugin, I've mentioned the plugin already, the plugin um, for the selected object in the host tool. So this is, so you don't even have to build a UI for OSLC. To, you don't have to build any UI to create your links. You just include the plugin and it will display the links, it will allow you to create links, it displays and modify link validity. Um, it displays and allow you to select the current um, global configuration, um, whether that's a, uh, a IBM ELM global configuration or a SmartFact global configuration. Both of them are fine, of course. Um, and then, well, there's which hover. Um, and then, of course, there's some admin functions. If you're an admin, you can do things like add and remove service provider associations. Um, so a quick, uh, and this is, um, this is the, the, um, the OSLC, general OSLC plugin in various contexts. So here it is in JAMA. Uh, here it is in RS Innovator, and here it is in the bottom side of CodeBeamer, uh, where we can where we can select the global configuration that you've got your trackers in, and you can um, create your links, and uh, we can display your links. And so you select something inside of CodeBeamer, you can see all of the links um, inside. You can even do um, again because this is general, so see you can do in, full end-to-end -end reporting on all of this on all these links. So anyway, this is um, what the um, the plugin looks like in these tools, but the idea, of course, is that it's going to be integrated into your tool. So whatever it is you build, um, whether it's um, a com uh, commercial product or a home-built product, um, you will, you can integrate the plugin into your UI. So a little bit more detail on the integration model. Um, so as I mentioned before, one single Java interface. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a hint of what the flavor looks like in a minute. So. This is the API is based upon opaque textual IDs provided by the uh, provided the integrated tools, so you don't have to mess with URIs. Um, about twenty methods to this uh, tool adapter interface. Again, we met, we we uh, um, we um, estimate. You know, it's um, not a week to get a working prototype. Um, there's some application YAML for some other cool specific configuration like icons, labels, domains, and resource types. 
And then uh, the delegate, you have to implement a delegated UI because, well, I, it's kind of hard for me to display what a tool would look like and you know, how you want to display your resources. And then you integrate um, the plugin in its native in your native user interface. If you've got a tool, um, whether that's normally that's going to be a web you web UI, you drop the iframe in the web UI and you just talk to it with post message. And we also have plenty of integrations where um, that's just a browser inside of say another app, another uh, application say via Eclipse. And in my experience, developers documentation is good, working examples better. And um, General SOC includes a full working example. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a quick demo of this uh, working example. So you can see what I've been talking about, but you can also, the point is, is that way your developers can see how it works. And, that, you know, and then it's, it makes it very, very straightforward to see taking, a, taking something that's working and then connecting it to your existing system. Um, just a real quick glance at what the tool adapter interface looks like. Um, we have a series of methods that say something like get artifact, which is, means resource um, for a particular component, local configuration and concept ID. And the, the idea is, is you, you implement a series of uh, the, these tool adapter interfaces, uh, this a series of methods, um, and then suddenly you get all this functionality. Um, and so for example, a tool, uh, a, uh, an artifact to tau, tau means tool adapter object. <laughs> um, has an ID and it has a revision ID, a title, some links and properties, a resource shape ID, and th this is your OSLC type, um, which again, you know, for example, it might be um, test case or something. Um, so real quick overview, and then I'll give you a demo and pause for questions. I know this has been kind of, uh, kind of a whirlwind tour here. So again, plug and play framework for OSLC based integrations without all the OSLC and RDF complexity. If you just need to get your home-built tool integrated to whatever, um, CodeBeamer or Jazz or, uh, or Cameo or whatever, um, this is the tool. Uh, so it's based upon Spring Boot, independent of Leo, independent of Jenna. No, Jenna, hooray. Um, for, Jenna was fantastic for some things, but almost broke IBM ELM as we know. 100% um, compatible with IBM ELM, um, global configuration, link validity, TRS, and everything else, but also usable independent of IBM ELM. So we have a bunch of customers that can hardly spell IBM and have um, are using um, General SOC for um, uh, to do uh, their uh, OSLC based integrations with global configuration, link validity, link index. We have. Uh, existing commercial in integrations to PTC CodeBeamer, as I mentioned, JAMA, as I mentioned, Vector Informatic. And we have lots of in-house integrations in, uh, um, underway in uh, here um, in, in, in Europe. Um, and uh, let me show you a quick demo. Um, so what you're looking at here is the example app. So it's not very pretty. It's not meant to be pretty because um, this is just an example app where I've got um, a service provider and some components and some local configurations. And what I've done is this is, I've included this local configuration in my, um, uh, in my global configuration here. So let me show you that this works. I can go here and I can select one. I'm not going to do it, but because I've already done it. Um, and then I go to this local configuration. I'm just going to navigate here. Um, and here are, uh, uh oh, there we go. Um, so here's my plugin on the right hand side. I can click on a link and I can see, um, I'm sorry, I click on an artifact here. And what you're seeing down here at the bottom, this is also meant to be a demo application. It's also meant to show you how to use the plugin. So you can see the, the events that are being sent to the plugin so the plugin does the right thing. So the idea is that when you select on something in your tool, then on the right-hand side, we're gonna show you everything that it's linked to. So I can click here on this link and I can go see, I can go to um, the, the tool on the other side, the, the artifact on the other side. I can do a hover um, and I can, see on a, I can see the artifact and I can see the artifact on the other side. Um, this is the link validity symbol. So this says this is valid. So I'm going to, click on, I'm going to go to, I'm going to navigate to this artifact. Um, I'm going to make a change to it. 
Um, and again, right now, any change is, um, will set will set will change the hash, and therefore set it invalid. And when I go back here and click on it again, you'll see that it's been marked as uh, suspect, and then I can I can set it back to valid or set to val back to valid with a command. Um, and the, this, of course, um, oops, I can create a new link. So I can go here and I create a I can I can create a validates link. And here I'm I'm going to select the um, uh, an object uh, from uh, doors next. Uh, we have this configured to um, to be QM right now, but could be anything. So uh, okay, so here here I've I've uh, created a link in doors next to an object in doors next. I can go to an object in doors next and see that link. Okay, and um, that's going to take a second because it's um, querying. So that's I should be able to see that link, and that's of course because um, we're contributing a TRS feed. Why that? Why is that link not showing? That's odd. Um, we're contributing a, a TRS feed to um, uh, because of course this is QM. QM stores the links on the QM side and the IBM meta model and um, uh, we're contributing a, t a TRS feed, um, so and that th that'll get picked up by Doris Neck. For some reason, that link is not showing up on this side. That's odd. Um, there we go. Okay, so here, here I have my links on the other side, and I can also, of course, cr course create links from this side. Um, so here, um, this is a uh, picker. And we can create a link on this side, and I can add this link on this side. Um, oh, maybe my TRS feed is, I can add the, a link on this side. Finally, I want to show you um, baselining. So here I am, have this, this global configuration, which has um, CCM, um, general SOC, and um, RM. And I can click here, and I can say create baseline. And we know what we know that's going to do is that's going to create baselines of all of the it's going to create a common baseline of all of its components. So I'm going to click here and it create it's created a baseline. And if I go there, notice it, it's created. Here's all the baseline, all of the local configurations baseline. I click here. And I go to this baseline. So we've created a baseline in the example application. So um, what you're seeing is the example application picking up uh, being based, the local configuration that we contributed to the GC being, con being um, uh, baselined. And then we're gonna, we navigate to that baseline and show the contents of that baseline. Um, so here, so um, uh, of that baseline. So in summary, what um, I can't show everything. So there's still a reporting to show and there's still, um, but um, essentially you have a fully functional um, OSLC application with global configurations, with link validity, with reporting, with um, and a flexible meta model um, by just implementing a single Java interface and a uh, providing a, um, and providing a rich hover. Um, I'm going to pause there for questions. I know that I know I was really, really fast. There's a lot to cover, um, but that's because General Sosi does a lot of stuff. So, do I have questions? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Ed, for the presentation. It's fantastic to to generate as much as possible these OSLC APIs. Um, so, first question is: You framed your presentation is a great opportunity to create OSLC wrappers for existing internal tools. Uh, would you also consider this to be a good solution to provide OSLC capabilities to existing products? Um, Absolutely. From that, 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 a question that, that, about DAWs Classic, for example, like would Gen OS this framework be suitable to create an OSLC API for DAWs Classic? So, um... The motivation to commercialize it came because we were asked about internal. Um, we, of course, use it for all of our commercial offerings. And the, to answer your question, absolutely, we're actually looking at that. Um, but the, but there's some other challenges to Doors Next. I'm sorry, to Doors Classic um, that you have to have to be pay attention to. But yes, that's something we're considering. Okay. 
Fantastic. Um, do you or doing? All right. Uh, any e examples of integrations with GitHub, GitLab, or Azure DevOps? Absolutely. So I didn't mention because you know thirty minutes. So one of the things that we do is full traceability using OSLC from models all the way to single lines in source code. So absolutely Git, but not just Git, not just a nice little adapter that gives you a that allows you to put Git here, but traceability to the function. So that idea is you're sitting in doors next and you see a list of um, all of the uh, of the source code items in that in it that that your the source code items that uh, implement that requirement, and that also means Git full with full trace with full, full lifecycle traceability using your traceability um, a, uh, engine of, of choice. So it's, you could do, you could use JRS and and go all the way to Git, and not just to the to, to the individual to the individual code, to the individual lines of code, to the individual, to the individual method. So yes, not just Git, but traceability to source code uh, methods and functions, etc. Fantastic. Um, so there's another question in the Q&A about any support for MathWorks System Composer. Um, MathWorks System Composer? To apply general SLC for um, adding support. Uh, MATLAB send me a link, absolutely. So again, we have, I, I only mentioned a few of our commercial offerings that we have. So, you know, uh, Git and JAMA and, uh, and um, uh, provision, but there's we ha we also have System Composer and Simulink. Uh, System Composer not yet, but Simulink absolutely and Cameo um, as well, of course. All right, and a, a question from me. So you are generating these OSLT APIs, and is there one central place, maybe outside of these OSLT APIs, where you can configure then the valid um, link types that can be used between specific artifacts and um, um, you know the, the the authentications that a user might have, uh, the single sign-on, and and uh, what else? Oh yeah, the link validity. So is is that like all managed within SmartFacts independently, or is this managed individually in each separate OSLC um, integration? So the short answer is it's all built in. It's all there. Um, but a little slightly longer, I wouldn't say we generate an API, we, we expose a, an OSLC API for an existing tool. Um, and um, it, 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 out of the box, it, you get um, authentication. So OIDC, OAuth2, um, OAuth1 away. Um, and be, all you have to do is implement the, um, the iTool adapter interface and it, it, it integrates seamlessly to IBM, link, uh, IBM ELM links validity and a corresponding integration by SmartFacts for link validity. Um, so it's, and oh, and um, your data model question. So I mentioned at the very beginning that General SLC has a, custom, uh, has, a built, has a customizable data model. We're all data model driven. And so, the, so if you have a slightly, we have some customers that want to extend the OSLC data model, want to see it a little bit differently. So the idea is you have a, here's a system data model. Here are the OSLC domains and types that we understand. And then for this integration, this integration exposes test cases or requirements or whatever, and then it knows how to create all the different links and what links are, are, are valid or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you very much, Ed. We My pleasure. move on to the next speaker, uh, Robert Bayarjon, who is the Chief Product Officer at Sodius Willet. And 